Hello everyone, welcome to the lesson for contemporary topics in mathematics for lesson 3.4. You can follow along in your book on these pages as well. And if you're one of my students, as it says down here, copy down what you see for full points before the lecture due date. Now for vocabulary, you should know these words by the time we're done with this lesson. Uh, and make sure you read the note down here as well. But we'll move on. Make sure you use the examples in your book for additional help with your assignment, as always. There's actually 14 examples in the book for this one. We're going to go over seven more. That'll give you a total of 21 examples to look at. So let's get started, and let's check this out. We'll call this example one. Are these equivalent statements? Yeah, we're going to do something about a, an old jalopy car here. So let's call this, let's start with black there. Use that call this statement A. Statement A is going to be this statement. If if the car is not reliable, so if the car is not reliable, then the car is not noisy. We'll call that statement A. And statement B, we'll call this, it is false. So hopefully we remember what that means or how we write that. It's a logical statement from previous lessons. It is false that the car is reliable or the car is not noisy. Okay, so we're going to determine this, determine if it's equivalent. We just need to make sure that all the truth values in the truth tables match up. If they do, it's equivalent. If not, then it's not. So we're going to decide or determine that each one of these statements will be represented by our P's and Q's and R's if we need three, uh, but we just need two here. So P is going to be, let's call it the statement, the car is reliable. We leave out the not here. The car is reliable. That will be my statement P. And Q is going to be the statement, well, the car is noisy. That's the other simple statement that's in there. The car is noisy. change this color. Well, no, I'll just leave that for now as it is. Uh, Alright, so let's make a truth table. Let's see what we got. I've got some line tools over here. I'll use those to make a nice looking table. Okay, so that's going to be my P. That's going to be for my Q. And I'm going to have two different statements here. Statement A I'm going to put over here. Statement B I'm going to put right over there. Let's see what we got. Okay, so here's P, here's Q. And if I take statement A and make a uh, sentence or a, a logical and symbols, logical, symbolic sentence, I would say this would become so this is if the car is not reliable, so that's not P. And it's an if-then statement, so not P implies the car is not noisy, not Q. That's going to be statement A. We'll put that right here. So this is going to be statement A. That was this one right here. And then over here, we'll put statement B. And that's going to be, it is false. So that's, you got the negation on the outside of a set of parentheses when you have it is false. So it is false that the car is reliable, so that would be just plain old P, or, so you have your symbol like that, the and is the one that looks sort of like the A with the missing bar, or like that, So or the car, car is not noisy, not Q, right there. So from here now it's just a matter of filling out our truth tables correctly. So this was true, true, false, false, we just start with half and half, and then 
the key will go every other, true, false, true, false. Now, not P, and not key, we're going to do this in just a second. Let me, oh, I guess I can't do that. I think we can, we can take care of that later. Um, so not P is going to be filled in here first. Let's do this one first. Let's start with A. So let's do these two first. Not Q, we just take our, or not P, we just take our P column and switch those things around. So false, false, true, true. Not Q, same thing, false, true, false, true. And now we've got all that. And then we should remember from our previous lesson what would be true, what would be false. So we're basically looking for the one where the first part, the antecedent or the hypothesis is true, and then the second part, the consequence or the conclusion is false. That's what we're looking for. If there's anything like that, that's the false one. The rest are true. So if you have any true to false with implies, with if-then statements, those are the only false ones. So this is my final answer, you might say. So over here would be if I get the same thing right here as I get over here in the end, which is going to be over here, because that's the last thing we do. We do the parentheses first over here. If this column is the same as this column, they're equivalent. So let's check this out. So here I do the parentheses first. This is first. This is going to come second and not Q. And then from there I would do the OR part. And then after I do all that, then I would take the negation of this third part. So let's work that through. So true, true, false, false. Just rewriting the P column here. And not Q is false. So we're just taking this and flipping it again. False, true, false, true. So when it's an OR, Remember, you look for either one. As long as one of them is true, the whole statement is true. If both of them are true, that still works. They both have to be false for it to be false. So that is going to be that one. So now this, this isn't my final thing, but this is a pretty important almost there. So we're going to take this and now just take that and negate everything. So actually, if I were to stop right there, this would be equivalent. But I'm not stopping right there. I have this not part, so I have to do that last thing here. And so this is going to change to false, false, true, false. This is my final thing. This is my final truth column, you might say. So I look at this. I look at this. This column is not the same as this column. And so we say these are not equivalent. So they're not equivalent. They're not the same. So not equivalent. And get in the habit of, as always for, for my class, boxing in those final answers for me. So they're not the same, so they're not equivalent. All right, let's move on. What a beautiful car that is. I hope your first car, if you get a, a first car pretty soon, is nicer than that one. Uh, all right, look at this curmudgeon. He looks like. Looks like he's ready to just be grumpy and mean. Uh, but there's better pictures of him. But I like this picture because he looks so mean. Uh, so De Morgan's laws. This is Augustus De Morgan right here. He was one of the the founders of both set theory and logical statements. So the the laws here we actually kind of saw this represented in the previous example we just did. These are pretty big though. So this is number one. It gets its own page. Not P and Q, Q being in parentheses, and then we have this thing. We haven't learned what that's meant yet. We've had a single bar here with two arrows, but we haven't had the double bar like this. We'll talk about what that means in just a moment. This goes with this, not P or not Q, not P or not Q. This right here just means equivalent. So if you have something like this, that's equivalent. That is an equivalent statement to something like this. And he also came up with a, a second law. And this second law is not, and it's P or Q. So it's just very similar to this, just the and got switched. And we do our double arrow with the double bar again. That is the way our book has it. Other books use different different symbols occasionally but this is 
way our book has it, so we're going to use that one to represent that. So this is not P and not Q, and it's like that. If you remember back from chapter two, there was some stuff with intersections and unions. If you look back at those Dill Morgan's laws in that chapter, there's extremely similar. They're very, very much related. You can look in your book and see that they match up. There's one of your pages in the book when it talks about De Morgan's laws for this lesson. Shows you how they match up. I'm not going to go over that here, um, but let's make sure we know what that means right there. This means these symbols, same thing. These symbols, this means equivalent. So that is the symbol we will use for equivalent logical statements. Hey, buddy, how you doing? All right. So moving on to another example. So we're going to write a statement that is logically equivalent to this. If you live in California right now, um, where we live on the high desert here, this doesn't happen very often, but back where I'm from, Michigan, snowmobiling, I've, uh, I've gone once or twice. It was a lot of fun. But here's the statement. The snowmobile snowmobile was neither an arctic cat, that's a brand of snowmobile, an arctic cat, nor a ski -doo. that's another brand of snowmobile. So the snowmobile was neither an arctic cat nor a ski -doo. So just like before, we've got simple statements within this compound statement. Let's break those simple statements down. And I'll, there we go, I'll use red here to write that out. So let's let P this time, we'll start with this, that the snowmobile was an Arctic cat. That's one simple statement I could pull out of this. So the snowmobile was an arctic cat. And then the other statement, you probably guessed it already, but we would have the snowmobile is a ski -doo. The snowmobile is a ski -doo. Okay, so go back to back in black here. And here is the the given statement. So this is a given statement up here. The snowmobile was neither an Arctic cat, Arctic cat nor a ski -doo. So we take that, and if we're going to put it in symbols, it would look like this. Since it's neither this nor this, we would say not P and not Q. Neither P nor Q. That's another way to write that. So this is this is pretty important. This is where we're starting. I'll circle that and. Then by De Morgan's law, whoa, what happened there? There we go. By did it again. Oh well. By De Morgan's law, we can take this now. So let's go back to De Morgan's law back here for just a moment. And so we're looking for one that looks similar to that. So we have not P and not Q. So we can look at whoops not P and not Q, that's going to be this one right here, it's in that format, we have P on this side and then we have the AND symbol, so this I can go work backwards this way, this would be equivalent to this statement over here, not P or Q, so we're going to take this and I can just switch it to that, so the, the new statement or an equivalent statement would be not and then in parentheses P or Q, not P or Q, if you were to just be asked to put it in symbols, that would be it. If you were asked to put it back into words, we would say this instead. We would say that, this is like saying it is false that, and then the P and the Q part. So it is false that the snowmobile was an arctic cat or a 
mosquito. So P4 cube was an Arctic cat. So it just depends on what they ask for. If they want the, the thing written out in words, you write that. If they want it in symbols, you write that. So let's do a similar example to that with a little twist. Hope you're not hungry right now. That is looking really good. That's a lovely looking pot roast. Um, here's the statement. The pot roast is hot, but it is not well done. That would be bad. Maybe that would be like you just throw it in the microwave for a while, but really didn't get cooked enough. We don't want to eat something like that, but let's take this and do the same sort of thing that we just did in example two. So we're going to have, just like here, let's do the P and the Q. Let's break that down first. So simple statements within the context of this compound statement. We've got P, the, hot, the pot roast, is hot. That's one statement in there. And Q, you could say the pot roast is not well done. Instead of saying it, we'll say the pot roast. So the pot roast is, and then we'll leave out the not, that would be not Q instead, the pot roast is well done. Okay. So just like before, let's write the, the given part in symbols. What would that be in symbols? So this but, that refers to and, remember. So but, and, they, they go together, they match up. So the pot roast is hot, that would be statement P, and then the and symbol and it is not well done but is it is not well done same, same thing there so not q this is the given part okay so again by de morgan's law we can go back to that so i'll flip flip the slides in a second and see what we have there again so by de morgan's law so i'm going to look for the one that has the and in it and see what we got there so this one here, that's the same one as this one before, but now there's no not in front of there. We can still think of it the same way though. So if you negate something that's already negative, it's going to become positive. Uh, so we're kind of using that idea here. So by the Morgan's Law, we're going to have an equivalent statement for this would be, so we're going to take this. We don't have the not P here. We just have plain old P. So we're going to have not, and then we're going to have what we see we see there. Um, okay, so we have not and then not p. I'll, I'll re explain this part why it's not p now instead in just a second. So not not p or q. So this would be, this would be it. So we're just doing it in symbols. And why why the not P here? Why was that? We'll go back to De Morgan's law again, and we see that if it was not P to start, then it becomes kind of a positive P in a sense. But I started with a positive P, so I have to change that to a not P here. So that's the reason why that is. That's the little twist that was in example three, but not in example two. So if we take this and we write it in in words now, this is, it is false again, so we have, it is false, you may see it written as, it is not true, would be the same thing as saying it is false at the beginning, so we'll just say it is false though, it is false that the pot roast is not hot, or it is well done, that is the positive Q there, so that it is well done. So in words, that's what you'd have in words and symbols, that's what you, what you would have in symbols. Right, now let's go to 
another law. The book, this is on page 133. The book does not give it this name. I came up with this name because I just wanted to be able to refer to it quickly. So I'm calling this the, equi the conditional equivalence law. Again, you will not see that in the book. It's on page 133. It's kind of boxed in towards the bottom, though. So this is page 133. If you want to take a look at that. But it's pretty important that we know this. So this is what the law says. If P then Q is equivalent to, so this statement is equivalent to this statement, not P or Q, not P or Q. So this is, this is big. you got to remember this. We'll call it the conditional equivalence law. Uh, even though the book doesn't use that. So just as a verbal example, let's say P was it is snowing and then Q was it is cold. So I would say if it is snowing, then it is cold. I would say that's a true statement. If it's snowing, then yeah, it's going to be cold. Uh, so that's equivalent to saying that either it's, it's not snowing or it is cold. If you think about that, well, that would have to be true. If this was true, this would have to be true. It, if it's Either it's not snowing, so if it's not snowing, then it could be could be warm, it could still be cold, or it is cold. So this is equivalent to this. Uh, we'll do some examples using this, these next couple of examples here. So what the heck is going on here? Just a second, this is, I didn't come up with this question, or I didn't come up with this one. I'm, I'm using a lot of the examples in the book, or a lot of the homework questions that I'm not assigning to... Uh, come up with these. So this was actually in your book as a question. We'll do this one together. So write a conditional statement now. So this is a conditional statement, not just a statement that is equivalent to, let's use this as our sentence. Bob the tomato visited the nursing home. There's our nursing home down here. Visited the nursing home. I kind of wish I would have come up with this example. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm jealous. They, they came up with a, a great example here. So, Bob the Tomato visited the nursing home, or he did not visit the Cub Scout meeting. So I used to be in Cub Scouts. Uh, that was fun back in elementary school. But he did not visit the Cub Scout. meeting. So that's my sentence. Uh, compound statement here. So let's break it down just like before. So let's break it down into its constituent parts. We have Bob the tomato visited the nursing home. That would be one statement. So Bob the tomato visited the nursing home. And let's say that Q is, so he, let's, since it's starting off a new sentence, we'll say Bob the tomato instead of he. So Bob the tomato visited the Cub Scout meeting. Oh, visited the Cub Scout meeting. I know there's a not in there, but that would be not Q. So this is just plain old Q. Visited the Cub Scout meeting. So the same sort of thing as before. So now we're doing something like we did in examples two and three now with a conditional statement. So the given statement is not written in a conditional form, but we're going to change it so that it is in the conditional form. So Bob the tomato visited the nursing home, that would be P, and then or he did not visit the Cub Scout meeting, that would be or not Q. So if you were to do that, sorry, no, I mean, not our final answer there, that's just a really important bit of information. So P or not Q, that's what we're given. And now instead of De Morgan's Law, we use that conditional equivalence law. I'll abbreviate that like this, the conditional equivalence law. <coughs> excuse me, getting over being sick. Sorry for that. So by the conditional equivalence law, we could come up with this equivalent statement. We could say that 
this is the same, so let's go back to what we just wrote there. So P implies Q, same as not P or Q, not P or Q. So we have not we have P or not Q, so we have to kind of reverse what we had there. Uh, so we're gonna take take what we have here. So the not P or Q, we have P or not Q. So that should be opposite of what we see here. So this is going to say that this will become, since it's P or Q, this will be, oops, wrong one, there we go. This will become not P implies not Q. Hopefully you can see the difference there. So let me, feel like I should re-explain that one more time. So not P implies not Q. This based on this here. If you said to start not P or Q, it would be the positive of P implies a positive of Q. We're doing the opposite of that here though. We have positive P or not Q would imply the opposite of P or, or it implies the, the opposite of Q. So kind of go back if you need to, to catch that. Um, but you would say that in symbols or in words, the statement would be, this is an if then statement now with this arrow, that single arrow, conditional statement, if Bob the tomato did not visit or didn't visit, either way would be fine, did not visit the nursing home. Then, I can say he because we referred to Bob the tomato already, then he did not visit the Cub Scout. And that would be in words or in a sentence final answer there. So either this or this. Moving on to another example. Oh, he's back. Our curmudgeon the Morgan is back. This one will be a little quicker to do though. So this one we're just going to do in symbols. Let's say we started with a statement like this. Not, and then parentheses, not P implies Q. Not, not P implies Q. I'm going to use kind of like a, a two column proof format. You learned about that in geometry. I'm just going to have my statements over here and my, my reasons over here for doing this. So we should start off with, I'm going to look back at the equivalence, the conditional equivalence law. I'm just going to rewrite this down here, but in the context or with now what I have here instead. So I'm going to start with my parentheses. I'm not going to worry about this not yet. So I just have this to start. So not P implies Q. That's going to be equivalent to, if we go back again to the conditional equivalence law, so now I have not P implies Q. That would be the positive P then because this changes to not P if it's positive, but if it's not it would change. It's not P to start. This would be positive instead. And so this Q is the same there it's positive there. So this becomes P or Q. P or Q. What's the reason for that? Why can I do that? And just remember here, I'll, I'll highlight this. I'm just doing this red part right now. I'm just doing that. Not worrying about this yet. So why can I say that? That's the conditional equivalence law. That allows me to go from this to this and say those are equivalent things. Notice I'm not doing truth tables for all these. These are just laws. These are things I can use. They've already been proved, so I don't have to go through the whole truth table. That's the nice thing about some of these laws. They're kind of shortcuts, short ways to determine if something is equivalent. So now I'm going to add the not part here. So that part I'm going to add here now. Uh, and this now becomes not, and rewriting this here not and the not P implies Q that's going to be equivalent to to this I'm just going to negate both statements it's like an equation sort of in algebra you can 
change everything in the same way. So I'm going to negate everything here and I'm going to negate the whole thing over here. It's like multiplying both sides by 2, dividing both sides by 16. It's like adding the same thing or subtracting the same thing from both sides. We can negate both sides of logic statements as well. So that's our reason here. We just negated both statements. So if they're equivalent and we negate both of them, they're still going to be equivalent. So negate both statements. That's my reason there. And now I look at that and now this is just like if this were an algebra problem, you could write equals and then write equals again. I'm going to write equivalent again. So this side staying the same here. Uh, I, I don't want you to get confused and think that this is part of that. So I'll just erase that here. Um, that's that's not like a new symbol, like half of a congruent thing. It's still not there. So this equals this, which also equals. Now we can take this. De Morgan's law told us that we can, in a sense, distribute that through, but the or changes to an and. So this becomes this and this. So not P and not Q. That would be your final statement there by De Morgan's law. So this is De Morgan's law right there. So this is the same thing as this. This is equivalent, I should say, to this. So it would sound different if you said it out loud, if they had different things attached to them, but they're equivalent things. They're, it's just a different way to say the same thing. All right, and then now with these last couple of examples here, we're actually going back to some stuff that you learned or should have learned in, uh, in your geometry class. So this, in chapter two of geometry, you learn stuff like this. You're gonna fill in the table. Below here, we've got, you remember some words like, oh, conditional, we should definitely know that, but converse, inverse, and contrapositive. Converse, inverse, and contrapositive. I'll go about that far, that should be enough room. Try to make yours about as wide as what you see here, and you should have plenty of room to, to fill in everything. Uh, and you probably guessed by now, looking at this picture, this is going to involve a little bit of absolute value with this one, but we'll keep it pretty simple. Okay, and there's there's a start there. Let's now say that this is the type of statement. This is the statement itself right here. Over here is going to be in symbols what it would look like. And then here we'll put the truth value. So is it true or is it false? Let me add a few more lines here. If you're writing this on line paper, three blue lines would be what I would recommend for each row here. Three blue lines. Recommend that for each row. And there we go. Alright, so let's start here with the conditional. That's the original statement in a sense. That's my original if-then statement. So conditional or an if-then statement. Here's my original statement. If x equals 3, then the absolute value of x equals 3. That's going to be my original statement. In symbols, we would have to label these things. So we could say let p be this and let q be this. I will just circle it here. So I'm going to say this, the x equals 3 part. Notice not including the if. It's the part that comes after the if. That'll be my statement P, and then this will be my statement Q. So if P, then Q is what I have there. So that would look like if P, then Q. P implies Q. Now, is this true? Well, if x equals 3, and that's your only thing that x equals, if you plug that in, does the absolute value of 3 equal 3? Well, yeah. That has to be true. So this is a true statement. From there, let's go to the, the converse. We'll write down all the types here. The converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive. Contrapositive. Squeezing that in there. There we go. So the converse, 
you remember from geometry, you might not, but we have to switch the statements around. So we just flip-flop the P and the Q. I, I tend to think of Converse shoes, and maybe you want to switch brands to Converse shoes, because a lot of people think those are pretty cool shoes. Uh, so maybe you want to do that. So if we would write this flipped around, we would take now, if the absolute value of x equals 3, then x equals 3. So it's exactly the same, except these two are just flip-flopped with each other. This would be now q implies p instead. And just a second, let me get a, a quick drink here. So q implies p. Is that going to be true? Well, let's think of what we could plug in here to make this first part true. So I could plug in a 3, and that would equal 3. Then x, yeah, well, that would be 3. But is there something else I could plug in for x to make this first part true, but that wouldn't make this second part true? Yes, there is. I could plug in negative 3. So negative 3, the absolute value of negative 3 does equal positive 3, but that value to start was not positive 3. So this would be a false statement because of that. You can come up with counterexample, a counterexample for that. So the inverse, let's go to that now. The inverse, we negate. And by that I mean we negate the original statement, the original conditional statement. So always go back to this and then for this if it was, we could write if x does not equal 3, but we have a nice little symbol to represent that. We can just do that instead. So if x does not equal 3, then the absolute value of x does not equal 3. If we think about this, let's write in the symbols all first, not p implies not q. If we think about this, well for the same reasons this is not going to be true, for the same reasons as converse wasn't true. If x is not equal 3, well I could come up with x equals negative 3 and plug that in here and it would make that true. So this would be, first part would be true if you said x was negative 3. That's a number that does not equal 3. But the second part would be false. So when that happens, when you have the first part true, second part false, that makes a conditional statement false. So both of these, let's make a little quick note here. We came up with a counterexample. Counterexample here was x equals negative 3. So that's why that was false there. That's why those two are false. And then the contrapositive is doing both things at the same time. You're switching and negating. So switch and negate. Switch and negate. And so if I'm going to write that out in symbols or in words first, I'm sorry, we would take, I usually just take my converse and throw knots in there. So I go back to the converse and say, okay, I, that's already switched for me. So if x does not equal 3, then the absolute value of x does not equal 3, then x does not equal 3. Well, if the absolute value of x does not equal 3, there's no way you could have a number that still would equal 3. That's not possible. So this would be, we write it in symbols. We have not q implies not p. This is going to be true. So we take, we look at this, I notice this and this are the same, and I notice this and this are the same. And that always is the case. Conditional and contrapositive end up always being equivalent statements, and the converse and inverse are always also equivalent statements. So if I look at this one, so orange here, this one and this one, these are equivalent. I can't write sideways very well, so I would say, let's just use the symbol for that. These two are equivalent, so converse, inverse are equivalent, and we can say the conditional and the contrapositive, same sort of thing. The conditional and the contrapositive are also equivalent statements. So if one is true, the other one's going to be true. If one is false, the other one's going to be false. Same thing with converse and inverse. They could all be true. They could all be false. Uh, but whatever this one is has to be the same as this one. Whatever this one is has to be the same as this one. Otherwise, you did something wrong. And so we got one more example. 
Okay, so determine which, if any, are equivalent. So we're going to look at this. It's kind of bringing, bringing it all home, bringing it all together here with this last one. Let's call, first of all, let's call this statement A today is not Sunday. Or the library is open. Here's a library here, pretty cool looking library. I'd like to go read some books in there. Read some books. I don't know if you know that. The reference. I love watching movies, and maybe you can come in and, and tell me what movie that's from. Maybe I'll give you a bonus point for that if you're the first person to tell me. Read some books. Read some books. If today, sorry, <laughs> I'm distracted here. If today is Sunday, it's a statement B. If today is Sunday, then the library is not open. The library is not open. And statement C, if the library is open, and today is not Sunday. So today is not Sunday or the library is open if today is Sunday, then the library is not open, and if the library is open, then today is not Sunday. So I just see two basic statements in here. One, one of those statements is today is Sunday. Call that statement P, today is Sunday. And the other simple statement in there, the other basic statement in there I see is the library is open. is open. And now we're going to make make another truth table to finish this one up. Line tool. Okay, so use black again. So let's go with here will be my P. I see three different statements here. So I'm going to have my P column, my Q column, and then I'm going to have a column for each one. So this one statement, statement A I'm going to put in that column, statement B I'm going to put here, and then statement C I'll put over here, and let's make this across the way here, All right, and I'm going to add, I'm going to add some yellow lines in here just so I can keep things nice and straight for you. Um, you have your blue lines on the, the line paper, so you can just use that, but these yellow lines will help me and hopefully help you see how things line up a little easier. Okay, so there's there's that. Not perfect lines, but oh well, it's pretty good. Okay, so let's call this let me use black again for that. Let's call this P. Let's call this Q. And then let's take each one of these and write them in symbols instead. So today is not Sunday, that would be not P. I'm going to space these out so I can do my rows here, my logic statements, or my two tables. Not P or, here's or, the library is open, or Q. Not P or Q. That is statement A. It's green for that. So this is A. This is going to be B. This is going to be C. So statement B, if today is Sunday, so I see an if then statement here. So in the middle, I'm going to have this implies arrow, if then arrow there. And I have if today is Sunday, so if P, then the library is not open, then not Q. And then finally for C, if the library is open, then today is not Sunday, another conditional statement. So if the library is open, that is Q implies not. So from here, let's put in our values. We've got true, true, false, false.
false, we've got true false, true false, and then we could start working some things out here. So when we get to this, we've learned some shortcuts basically. Could you do this the whole way and do the whole truth table for each one of these? Sure. You could still do, go back and do that, but I'm going to try to at least emphasize the shortcuts here and and go with it from there. So let's start with let's actually start with B. We're going to start with B. We'll come back to to this one in a second, but I'm going to start with this conditional statement. So to start off with the, the truth value, I do have to at least figure out one of these. So I'm going to I'm going to do this in well, I'll go with orange, and so I'm going to put my one, my first and my second here. I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to in in black the the big one the one that really counts right there is going to be three so I'm going to rewrite my truth values here this would be true true false false and then not Q we switch those all around false true false true so take Q negate that and then remember with implies with if then statements you're looking for basically look for the ones that you have first part true second part false that's the only one that's going to be false the rest will be true so I don't see any other trues to falses that's going to be the only false one so the rest of these are going to be true this would be my my final statement that is equivalent to false true 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 now if I look at this could I fill in Q could I fill in not P and then fill in that sure but I could go and just look at this and say, well, I notice that this and this, based on what we just did here, I notice that one is a conditional and one is a different one. One's actually that second one, C, is the contrapositive of the original one there. So I got P implies not Q. I flipped them and I negated them. So the not Q became Q and the P became not P. So I could go right here and I could just automatically say well yeah B is equivalent to C because they are equivalent statements they're contrapositive one's a contrapositive of the other one we know contrapositives are always logically equivalent to each other so this is going to be I could just fill this in right now without even filling that in my nice little shortcut here now could you go back and and do that or if you just didn't recognize that could you fill in the, the, the values there of course uh, so I'll, I'll do that, but I'll do that in yellow. So this isn't something you would have to have done. So that's a true. You can't see that very well. Let me, let me use, oh, I guess I'll use the orange. I'll put these in parentheses, though, because we didn't necessarily have to, to write these in. So we could have figured this one out without this. So true, false, true, false. And then not P would have been false, false, true, true. And this is this is at least good to double check to verify that this actually works. So I'm just showing you right now that, hey, yeah, these are equivalent. So you're looking for the one, remember, that's true to false. So that's the only false one. So this one is false, and then the rest, yep, 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 they're all true. Uh, so you notice that that has kind of double checked that for us. We know that we would have done that third, but you could have done that right away. So these are equivalent. I'm going to connect these and say that these are equivalent. And you can say that here B and C, you can say C is the contrapositive of C is the contrapositive of B. All right, and then from here, could you do your your columns like this? Yes. I'm going to go back to De Morgan's law, and I'm going to make a little note here. So this one, it's kind of up to you. If you're you're just not totally following what's equivalent to what, yeah, you can fall back on on that. If you can see the shortcuts, use the shortcuts. But if you can't see the shortcuts, don't feel like you can't do the problem. You can still go back to the whole truth. Truth tables are the same things from before and still do it that way. So De Morgan's Law would say if we 
look at this, Morgan's law would say P implies not Q is equivalent to not P or not Q. If we go back to De Morgan's law, it's way back here, but if we go back to De Morgan's law, you can see that here if you have P or not Q, that's going to be written <coughs> written in this way. Just a second, let me gather my Okay, that's why I was getting confused. It's not De Morgan's law, but the uh, conditional equivalence law. My fault on that. So we're using this instead. So what we had was P implies not Q. That would mean we would still have not P, the P to not P. But then this was not Q, so this would be not Q over here. So let's go back to our last one. Change this. Not De Morgan's law. Let me make that a little smaller. So not De Morgan's, but the conditional equivalence law would tell us that's a conditional equivalence law would say that this and this are equivalent. And I notice that this is not the same as this. Just because they're not the same doesn't mean they're not equivalent, but not P or not Q, that's going to totally change this column. And so we would have something that's not going to match up there. So we could use this kind of as a shortcut and say that my A would not be equivalent. We could use this, the equivalent symbol with a slash through it, just like not equals, not equivalent to B. So that's one way we could think about this last one we have to fill in here. But if that, if you're not following that, you could, again, go back to the, to fill it in your, this first, this second, and then doing that third. On um, this one, I think this one's not quite as straightforward as this one was with the contrapositive, so I'm gonna do that without writing it in parentheses. So let's just verify that what I have said here actually matches up. So P, you're gonna have, this is false, false, true, true, not P, just taking that, and then here's Q, we got true, false, true, false, and this is now this or this so look at this or this is one of those true yes one of those true no one of these true at least one yes and this one same thing here so this is the final statement here and so we have this false true 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 this does not match up with either one of these so which ones are equivalent well it's just b and C. So that is all, all we'd have to say. So just B and C are equivalent. So I'll box that in. Just B and C are the ones matching. So not A. Hey, congratulations. You made it through the end of the lesson. Pretty long lesson there. Any lesson that has 17 pages to it is going to be kind of long. But uh, hopefully that made sense to you. As always, go back and, and rehash things or look at things. Go pop back pause rewind as you go and uh, feel free to come in ask questions if you're one of my students and uh, let me know if you had any trouble understanding any of the examples all right thanks and uh, I'll, I'll see you guys later